Good morning. Happy Easter, everyone. I uh, hope it's a beautiful morning where you are because it certainly is here on St. Simons Island. We had a little difficulty with the recording this morning at Lovely Lane, so I am going to simply record the message and post it uh, for all of you today. And so I hope you enjoy it. It's been a long year since March 2020. Financial burdens, lost jobs, businesses closed, isolation, disconnection, loneliness, anxiety, sickness, suffering, and even death. Many died alone in their hospital rooms without family. Last Sunday, we remembered the betrayal, suffering, and death Jesus endured during Holy Week. And the crushed expectations, the hopelessness, and utter despair of his disciples, and their absolute uncertainty about their future. The man who they had followed and believed to be the Messiah is dead. Jesus is dead and his body is in a tomb. And I hear the echoes of S.M. Lockridge's meditation it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Well, Sunday is here, and he is risen. Our text today comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Let us pray. Oh God, no one needs to hear words from me this morning, but Lord, we need to experience you. So come now, speak to us and overwhelm us by your Holy Spirit that we will know that we have been in the presence of the living, living resurrected Lord. For he is risen. He is risen indeed. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, scholars say that Mark's account of the resurrection is a summary of Peter's preaching about Jesus. It's the shortest account in all of the Gospels. The three women were the first at the tomb and the first to hear the words, He is risen. And their reaction, they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Wow. They didn't share the good news of the resurrection. It was what they didn't do that Mark highlights in his account. They didn't anoint the body because there was no body there to anoint. So they were given another task by the young man in the tomb. He said, he's not here. Look, see that empty spot? He has been raised. But go and tell his disciples. A new mission was given. They came with one task and they didn't do it. They couldn't. It was no longer necessary. The things of death are no longer necessary. The attitude of death, the victory of death was no longer necessary. So a new mission was needed. Go and tell his disciples and Peter. 
So they fled the tomb and said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. That was Easter. Maybe not the Easter we are familiar with from our customs and faith, not the celebrations that we grew up with, but it was the real Easter to these women. Confusion, fear, astonishment, trying to make sense of the impossible. He's dead, but he's risen. You know, we all know many who are living in this kind of a state in their lives. Maybe family members, maybe some of us here today, neighbors, co-workers, classmates, living in a state of confusion, fear, astonishment, trying to make sense of the impossible or at least the incomprehensible. And that too is an authentic Easter experience, just like these ladies encountered. You see, Easter cannot be explained. It must be experienced. And what we know now that these women did not know then is that they would later encounter the living, resurrected Lord and their lives would be forever changed. The original disciples and followers met him as they were hiding in an upper room. Paul met him on the road to Damascus and millions, including many here today, have met him through an experience with the Holy Spirit. It cannot be explained. It must be experienced personally. Sunday is here. He is alive. I've related to many of you the difficulties that our family went through concerning uh, our children's health. For 12 years, we were very distraught and troubled because of, of various uh, health concerns about our children. We went through 12 years of confusion and fear, uncertainty, despair, and trying to make sense out of all the nonsense. It was a dark period in our family. And there were times when I thought it would never end. But by the miracle of God, through his healing power, all of our children were healed. And I can tell you when that happened, a cloud of darkness was lifted. The burden that was overwhelming us was gone. And I can tell you there was a sense of joy and relief. And after years of anguish, there was peace. I can't explain it. I don't know how it happened. I don't even fully understand it. But the burden was lifted and the weight was gone. It's something that I could only experience and I cannot explain. And it continues today. Thanks be to God. But that's the Easter experience. Uncertainty, hopelessness, despair, shattered expectations. But still a hopefulness with the hope that Sundays are coming. Easter is the resurrection hope that only exists in the person of Jesus Christ. I can't explain it. You have to experience him personally. Many of you commented about S.M. Lockridge's meditation last week. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Well, in doing research for that piece, I also found a poem by S.M. Lockridge that I want to share with you today. It's called, That's My King. 
The Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder, do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define. He's limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of the world. He's God's son. He's a sinner savior. He's a centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's a fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength to the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent and he beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's the key to knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. He reigns in righteousness and his yoke is easy and his burden is light. I wish I could describe him, but yet he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind and you can't get him off your hand. You can't outlive him and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah, that's my king. That's my king. I wonder if you know him today. You see, I can't explain Easter. I can't really even preach Easter. I can't define Easter. But once you know Jesus, you will understand. <clears throat> Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. I can't explain Easter. You have to experience Jesus personally. Easter is knowing Jesus. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. We have the resurrection hope. That is Jesus Christ, our Lord. I wonder, do you know him today? So I want to extend this invitation. My prayer is that all of you know Jesus personally. And so you understand the Easter experience. But if you don't, I pray that you will ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior today and that you will establish that personal relationship with Jesus Christ and start that journey of understanding 
what Easter is really all about. And for those of us who have met him, who understand Easter, there are a lot of people out in the world today who are living in a state of confusion and despair and trying to make sense out of all the nonsense in their life and circumstances. And we can be an instrument to help them meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So go and share the good news that others will have that Easter experience that comes through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Easter.